Well, the European Union has justified the country's blacklisting for non-compliance with rules governing anti-money laundering. The country was earlier this year put on a list of countries with deficiencies in anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing frameworks. Now, the enforcement is expected to take off from today with its associated scrutiny for firms transacting businesses with banks in Europe. Some have criticized the EU, especially when the Ghana government was already taking steps to deal with the issues identified. Head of EU delegation to Ghana, Diana Akonsha, however, tells Joy Business the action will only be reviewed from next year if, if Ghana takes some corrective measures to deal with the situation. The status of the file is that indeed Ghana has been uh, listed for uh, a um, non-compliance with uh, the international uh, rules relating to money laundering. But I would like to specify that uh, this listing from the European Union is a sort of uh, an automatic consequence of the fact that Ghana has been listed by FATFA, which is uh, an international body that uh, ensures the global governance on this matter. And it is uh, um, closely, operate closely with with the, uh, with the IMF. So the moment Ghana is going to be um, taken off the list of the FATFA, the European Union uh, in the next year review is going to also take, uh, take it off our list. But the precondition of it is that they are uh, um, complying with the FATFA recommendations so that FATFA can take them off the list. So we hope that, as the minister said, by the end of the year, the process with FATFA will be concluded so that they will be, Ghana will be delisted. And then we can start the process in the European Union to also, also delist them. Mm -hmm. But we are supporting Ghana. There is a dialogue ongoing in Brussels, but there is also a project that we are uh, working on together with the central bank and the ministry of finance where we are looking at how we can help them comply with these fatwa requirements so that they can be delisted as the eu's representative here in ghana are you satisfied with the uh, various policies that the government has been putting in place to take off from this blacklist it is, uh, this is a very technical issue. I know that there is this dialogue ongoing and at the moment uh, it is not for me to, to, to comment on it uh, because I would risk talking about things that I don't know. I know that the dialogue is ongoing and I rest on the optimism of the Honorable Minister to, uh, um, that the, the actions that they're putting in place are effective. Well, as we've been you know, discussing on the program, the European Union has justified the country's blacklisting for non-compliance with rules governing anti-money laundering. Now, the country was earlier this year put on a list of countries with deficiencies in anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing frameworks. Now, the enforcement is expected to take off from today with its associated scrutiny for firms transacting businesses with banks in Europe. Well, some have criticized the EU, especially when Ghana was already taking steps to deal with the issues identified Already we've heard from the head of the EU delegation who says that the action will only be reviewed from the next year, 2021, if Ghana takes some corrective measures. Let's expand this discussion and joining us to do so via Zoom with some analysis is compliance consultant Eric Corte. Welcome back to the program. As you know, I asked earlier on, what do you make of this development? Well, um, it's not unexpected for me, but I'm happy because it's come up and it gives us an opportunity to sit up and make sure that our AML frameworks and systems are working not only from government level or from the regulator's point of view, but from the point of view of the regulated entities. Interesting. But what do you think could be the possible implication for the banking sector? Well, the banking sector has no choice here but to place itself in a position to be able to sit up and ensure that when the EU starts scrutinizing the firms that deal with EU in trade, it will not be an issue in which the banks have been let down. Because it is the banking industry which will facilitate international trade business between the firms in Ghana and the international community. And so it is very important that whatever step government or the regulator takes in line with ensuring that we bring ourselves back into place in the EU list, it is the regulated entities who will come out clean to ensure that Ghana is ready. 
government and program under regulator will be may be ready from the point of view of the EU and the international community. But the script you read suggests that the EU is going to scrutinize transactions involving firms in Ghana. And it's going to begin with the banking industry. And this is the time for us to realize that the, the time for honeymoon in the financial service business is coming and gone. This time, it is real business, and it must begin with compliance. We're so grateful that you join us with this analysis, Eric. We're so grateful on that. We shall be keeping a keen eye on this development to give you updates as and when we do have them.